Welcome to Electron Line. Now here we have what we call a truncated right circular cone. If we're going to try to find the volume in the surface area, we need to come up with a few more tricks. All right, first of all, how would we find the volume of a truncated cone like this? The best way to do that is to first find the volume of a non-truncated cone and then subtract from that the small piece that is removed and think of that as a cone in itself. So what we're going to do is the volume is going to be the volume of the total cone minus the volume of the missing piece. All right, to do that, we think back on the previous video and we realized the volume of a cone is one third the area of the base times the height. So this would be equal to one third pi r squared, which is the base, times the total height, which we call large h. And then we subtract from that the volume of the missing piece, which is minus one third the area of the base. Now in this case, we have the small r here, so that would be pi times small r squared times the height here, that would be big H minus little h. So that would be big H minus little h, and that will then give us, oop, let me put v in front here, the volume of a truncated right circle cone. It's simply the volume of the total cone minus the volume of the piece that is missing. So next we're trying to find the surface area of the truncated right circular cone. To do that we need to find the surface area of the bottom, the surface area of the top, and the surface of the side here. So we're going to call this little piece here, we're going to call it the side from there to there. Then next what we need to do is, okay, write surface area, which is equal to the surface area of the top, plus the surface area of the bottom, plus the surface area of the side. All right, makes it easier to kind of write it out like that. So the surface area of the top, since it's a circle, would be pi times small r squared, plus the surface area of the bottom, pi times large r squared, so now we have the top and the bottom, plus. Now we're going to use the same trick that we did in the previous video. We're going to take the length of the side right here and spin it around and we're going to take the average distance that this center or that the side spins around which would be the point at the halfway between the top and the bottom. So to do that we could say that would be equal to the side multiplied times the average distance covered by that side as it spins around. Well the radius here at this particular portion the radius would be the average between these two, which would be the big R plus the little r divided by 2. That's the average radius. And we're going to spin that around, so it's going to be 2 pi r plus r over 2. So it will be 2 pi times big R plus little r over 2. This is the average distance covered. The 2's cancel out. And we can then say that this would be equal to pi little r squared plus pi big R squared plus, and here we can write mm, pi times s times r plus little r. And that would be the surface area of the truncated right circular cone. Now, what I've also done on the right side of the board is shown you how you can relate the height of the cone, the radius of the cone, and the, the length of the side of the cone, the slanted side here. And notice that if we think about this as a right triangle, we can see that s squared equals h squared plus r squared. And if you want to solve h in terms of s and r, it can be written like this. Or if you want to write s in terms of that, you can say that s is equal to the square root of h squared plus r squared. So you may need to do this in order to calculate the height or the slanted side in case you were given the other and you need it for the equations right here. And so now you also know what to do with a truncated right circular cone.